Hey, welcome to another week of Dance Around the Clock. This week, we're going to talk about two choreographers that you may or may not know. We're going to talk about the dance audition and what choreographers might look for. And lastly, you all are going to learn part of the combination that I taught the vocal company two weeks ago. Let's get started. So today, we're going to talk about Hope Clark and Gregory Hines. Now, a lot of us probably know Gregory Hines or have at least seen a clip of him tap dancing, right? But not a lot of people know about Hope Clark. And I was one of those people not too long ago, but the more you read about her, the more I realized that I was aware of a lot of her work and just didn't know that it was her that was choreographing it or directing in some cases. So who is Hope Clark? She is an actress, a vocalist, a dancer, a choreographer, a director. The list goes on and on. Her career started when she landed a role in West Side Story when she was just a teenager. And she toured with West Side Story before she went to Broadway with it. And after that, she joined a couple dance companies, the Katherine Dunham Dance Company and Alvin Ailey. And once she was finished with those dance companies, she went on to really start her performing career on Broadway and in film and television. And the list just goes on and on and on for her work in TV and film. She also had several Broadway shows she performed in. She was in West Side Story, Hallelujah Baby, Don't Bother Me, I Can't Cope, and a couple others. And she says that when she was in between acting jobs, she was often hired to choreograph stage and TV shows, and that it was just a way to pay the bills at first, but she found she loved the challenge of choreography, and that's how she started to get into it, and she was well-equipped because of all the experience she had as a performer. Then she went on to choreograph um, Porgy and Bess. She was also the first African-American and first African-American female to, to choreograph and direct Porgy and Bess. She, that was in 1995. She did um, Caroline or Change and Jelly's Last Jam, which she was nominated for a Tony Award for Best Choreography, and she co-choreographed that with Gregory Hines and a guy named Ted Levy. Um, she also won a Tony Award for her work on Porgy and Bess. She's truly incredible and has just kept working and working and working. Um, but the connection between Hope Clark and Gregory Hines is Jelly's Last Jam. Gregory Hines, one of the most celebrated tap dancers of all time. He was born in New York City and studied dance from an early age and performed with family members at the Apollo Theater. He launched a Broadway career and later starred in over 40 films, including The Cotton Club and White Nights. He's a tap dancer, actor, director, musician. He grew up as a member of Heinz, Heinz, and Dad alongside his father and older brothers. He studied dance with master tap dancer Henry Letang and spent much of his early career dancing at the Apollo Theater, gaining knowledge from fellow performers such as the Nicholas Brothers and Sandman Sims. He later left Heinz, Heinz, and Dad to form a jazz rock group called Severance, but he soon returned to New York where he launched a distinguished Broadway career. He started out in The Girl in Pink Tights and earned Tony Award nominations for UV, Coming Up Town, and Sophisticated Ladies. Later, he went on to win a Tony Award and Drama Desk Award for Jelly's Last Jam. Let's watch a video from the Tony Award performance of Jelly's Last Jam, choreographed by Hope Clark and Gregory Hines, and Gregory Hines is starring in this video. From the sporting house of New Orleans to the 
dance halls of Chicago, the show celebrates the life and lives of jazz pioneer Jelly Roll Morton. Now, in a backwater juke joint, Jelly and his sidekick, Jack the Bear, take on the locals. Here are Tony nominee Gregory Hines and the cast of Jelly's Last Jam in That's How You Jazz. Folks call me Sweet Papa Jelly Roll, finest piano man ever lived. Hell no, folks around here call me Foot in Your Ass Sam. Now, you don't live up to your name title, I'm gonna have to live up to mine. I'll show you how to play like folks down a uh, Nolan's way. Show you the stylish fingers they had. Come on and get your licks in. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's how you jazz. Now, in order to get going what I like to call Sweet Papa Jelly's Jazz, I need a low-down foundation. Help me out. That's it. You got it. Put in your ass. Lovely. Uh, can I get some uh, sink a sink a face? That's it. Let's talk about dance auditions. Dance auditions can be very overwhelming because you're walking into a room having no idea what choreography, what dance steps you're about to do, or what music you're dancing to, and you're expected to learn the combination really fast and then just be ready to perform it, probably 30 minutes later. 
that's a big ask. And choreographers are aware of that and they know how daunting it is to walk into a room and then just be expected to perform their choreography 30 minutes later. So what a choreographer usually looks for is not perfection, but someone who is going to be a hard worker, fun to work with, and will bring their personality to whatever the combination, the choreography is. When I am teaching an audition combination, I again am not looking for perfection, but really to see how much joy someone can bring to their dance and the acting beats and just if they can bring themselves to the dance steps, to the choreography. And I challenged the vocal company with this. I taught them a combination and had them film it. So let's take a look. to Too Darn Hot that I taught the vocal company last week. This was their audition combo for me to learn about them as dancers, and I wanted to share it with you. You'll see some familiar faces. The vocal company is going to help me teach this as well. I'm going to face away from the camera so you all can see my feet and the footwork that I'm doing, but I'll turn around at some point so you can see what the front half of my body is doing as well. So to start, we go step right, step back, left. Think of it as a cat step, going cat step. Yeah, and then your arms are gonna shoot out and clap in front of you. So it'll look like that. That is eight, one. We're going eight. Holy 
you have four options. Option one is to do it just like we learned it. Option two is to do it like Sophie. She goes half turn, half turn, no turn. Option three is to do it like Lindsay. She goes no turn, no turn, full turn. Option four is to do it like Bridget. She goes half turn, half turn, full turn. You can choose whichever option works best for you. Option one, two, three, or four. Let's try it all together from the top. A five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. How do we do? Let's do it one more time and let's speed it up because it's a little faster. A five,
Let's try it again. Thanks for dancing with me this week. This episode is part of our larger season, Digital Clock. If you'd like to learn more, please visit our website, collegelightoperacompany.com. See you next time. Mm -hmm.